Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining us. President Trump is pushing back today after a secret tape of him speaking with his former attorney, Michael Cohen, was made public. Cohen's lawyer gave the recording to CNN. In it, then-candidate Trump and Cohen can be heard weeks before the election discussing the payment related to an alleged affair Trump had with a former Playboy playmate. CBS News has not independently verified the authenticity of the tape. This morning, the president responded to its release on Twitter. What kind of a lawyer would tape a client? So sad. But he makes no reference to what was actually said in the recording. Major Garrett has more from the White House. I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. Uh, yes. Um, and it's all the stuff. The muffled audio was secretly recorded by Cohen in 2016, shortly before the election. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and I spoke to me. David is a possible reference to David Pecker, Mr. Trump's friend and president of National Enquirer's parent company, American Media Incorporated. So I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So no, pay the no, 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 no. I got... No, no, no. Jeff. The conversation came after American Media Incorporated reached a $150,000 deal to pay former Playboy model Karen McDougal for her story about an alleged affair with Mr. Trump in 2006. The president denies the affair. Mr. Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, fired back, saying the recording only proves the president's claims that he did not know about the transaction and provided this White House transcript of the recording, which claims that Mr. Trump says, don't pay with cash, check. Everybody heard just now Donald Trump say the word cash. On Monday, the White House deviated from its previous blanket denials of McDougal's alleged affair with Mr. Trump. Again, the president maintains that he's done nothing wrong, uh, and I would refer you to Rudy Giuliani. There's no question that Michael Cohen has the goods on the president. Michael Avenatti represents adult film star Stormy Daniels, to whom Cohen made a payment shortly before the election to keep silent about an alleged one-night stand with the president back in 2006. Mr. Trump has also denied his affair with Daniels. Davis said the recordings reveal those denials about McDougal are false. This is not a man shocked about Karen McDougal. He knows what they're talking about. And joining me now from Washington is Bob Cusack, editor-in-chief of The Hill. Bob, we saw the president responding on Twitter by questioning his attorney, secretly recording him, but he did not comment on the content of the recording. What do you make of his response? Well, I think the president and his allies have to be very concerned because apparently there are more tapes and this is just the beginning. Uh, it's interesting to see what's going to happen next as far as when will we hear the next tape? Will it be drip, drip, drip? Or will we we'll see them a lot at the same time? Michael Avenatti last night was saying, let's see you know, all the tapes. Let's hear them all and uh, be transparent about it. So uh, he's actually turned critical of Cohn after kind of forming somewhat of an alliance over him with him recently. So I think it's interesting. The president can't deny that's him on tape. Um, but the question is, what's next? So Rudy Giuliani, of course, maintains that the president was saying, don't pay with cash, pay with check. Cohen's lawyer insists the president in the tape said cash. Explain why this matters so much. It's it's a big thing, Tanya, because if you pay with cash, you can't track it. And if you can, if you pay with check, then that can be photographed. You can look it up and bank records. So uh, doing it kind of uh, above board is with uh, with a check, because it can be traced with cash, like the mafia can't be. Right. And so is that why discussions of this payment, even though it was not made, raise questions about campaign finance law violations? Yes. Uh, either way, whether it's check uh, or cash. Uh, the critics are already saying this is a campaign uh, violation, that uh, money would be used. And you, there are certain limits that you can only give, and certainly this, this would have exceeded that by tenfold over. Now, representatives for the president had previously denied knowing about McDougal's contract with American media. So even if this doesn't amount to anything illegal, what kind of problems could this recording create for the president moving forward? 
Well, certainly the White House has had to change its tune of, of what the president knew, and that's just the beginning, possibly, of other backtracks. And that's why, that's why I think it's very interesting that President Trump has really gone after Cohn with his tweet today and other tweets recently. Uh, and the fact that Cohn has retained Lanny Davis, uh, who was very close to Hillary Clinton, is an indication uh, that, listen, they're no longer friends, they're no longer business partners, and all bets are off. And, and Cohn is certainly, I think, uh, going to flip uh, un unless something happens in, in the next several weeks. Some people think that Trump might try to pardon Cohn, uh, but I don't know about that. I don't know if that's going to happen. That would, that would unleash a whole new bar barrage of controversy around this issue. Doesn't this sort of indicate that Cohn has flipped already to some degree? Yes. No, it does. It does. I think it's very clear that uh, Lanny Davis has said that Cohn has taken a, a so-called oath of independence. So mm -hmm. this Cohn was the guy who, who put problems uh, away for Trump, uh, and now he's making problems. <laughs> he's now creating a problem. All right, now, switching gears. Meanwhile, CBS News has learned that the White House will no longer make public readouts of the president's phone calls with foreign leaders. Now, even when they were released, we had to rely on the White House's work word for what was discussed. So why does this sort of official change matter? I think it matters for a couple reasons. One is because the big question uh, of the week and perhaps the month and maybe the year is what happened but, uh, behind closed doors between Putin and Trump uh, before they had their public appearance in Helsinki. Uh, that's a big reason. Uh, and as you say, you're not getting a lot of information uh, on any of these readouts, and you have to uh, think that, okay, we're, if we're going to report this, we have to say the White House said, because we don't know, we weren't in the room uh, as members of the, of the media. So I just think it's another example of how uh, this White House is, is not releasing certain information. Certainly, uh, the White House visitor logs, which uh, President Obama uh, opened up to the public, uh, Trump has not continued uh, that tradition, and, and this is just another step along those ways. And I think it's also Trump being very upset at the media for, for how his foreign trip was portrayed. Right. But of course, this, you know, raises a transparency issue, as you point out. But further, do you expect that this will lead to foreign leaders being able to further push their own narratives? Yeah, I, they're going to take advantage of it when they can. Uh, and then and maybe the White House then would push back if they feel like the narrative uh, is wrong. Um, but I think that also be kind of risky for foreign leaders to do because uh, you know, foreign leaders, they met with Trump and, and flattery works with this president and, and taking him on usually leads to a counterpunch. Right. OK. At the same time, also sort of a transparency issue here. Questions are being raised about whether the White House intentionally edited out a question to Russian President Vladimir Putin from the summit press conference. The question asked if he wanted Trump to win the election. Putin answered yes. Now, the Washington Post today claims the omission was likely not on purpose because they initially had a similar transcript due to a video feed switch. But shouldn't the White House go back and correct any inaccuracies to all official records of the conference? Yeah, I, I, I think they should, because it makes the story go away. And, and certainly, whether it was done on purpose or accidental, if it was done on purpose. It's not the first time that's happened uh, with, with various White House. Sometimes they have excluded a question and answer they didn't like. And certainly, I think the, the reason for some of the suspicion here is because Trump is, is firing back and now saying that, that he's concerned the Russians are helping Democrats in the midterm election. So it, I think they could put this to bed if they just fix the transcript. Right. All right. Now, lastly, the president today is focused on Trump. Trade. Just yesterday, it was announced the White House is planning a $12 billion bailout for farmers impacted by the trade war. Does this signal the president is digging in on his tariff strategy? I, I think so. And the, and the White House says this is just temporary. And certainly there are some conservatives in, in Congress who have been openly critical of this, including Senator Ron Johnson uh, from Wisconsin. And, and certainly that it's being called a bailout is not a good sign for uh, the Trump White House. And if and if the Obama White House had done this, you see a lot more conservatives saying this should not be done. So uh, the, the farm lobby, the farm uh, senators from farm states, they're very nervous. And the White House is saying, don't worry, this is all part of uh, the negotiation. We're going to give these payments in the short term, but in the long term, we're going to get better deals. But this is really, I think, an indication that the White House is getting a little worried uh, that this could hurt uh, his base support, which is very strong. Uh, but if, if farmers get really upset and their bottom line is hurt, then his numbers with his Republican base could dip.
And also, I mean, it seems to me Republicans, at least in that, those regions, must feel a little bit like caught between a rock and a hard place in, in, oh, with an issue yes. like this, no? Yeah, we've talked to a lot of them. I talked to Senator Grassley recently, and, and he's they, they are just very frustrated, and they're saying, listen, this is a dangerous game the White House is playing. They've told that directly to the president, uh, and the president is saying, listen, I, don't worry. I'm a deal maker. I'm going to get a good deal, uh, but there's going to be some rocky uh, portions of, of this negotiation, and the stock market's gotten a little rattled at this, but it's overall strong, and I think that's actually given Trump some more leeway uh, because the, the, the stock market has been relatively strong but to Bob, play this game. But Bob, there are signs, at least according to Bloomberg, that this trade war is starting to soften the international economy. It, yeah, there, there are indications. And what Republicans on Capitol Hill are very concerned about is that the full effects are going to be felt this fall, mm -hmm. right before the midterms. And that really has them uh, scared because both the House and Senate, less likely the Senate, but they both could flip to the Democrats. All right. Bob Cusack, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.